Hello and welcome to the Storyteller Circle with B. Dave Walters. I'm doing something unusual here, uh, which is why my setup is weird and I'm reading something over there and my head's all cut off because I'm the worst person. But uh, I want to tell you, first of all, uh, Storyteller Circle is where we talk about all things about storytelling, writing, sometimes we're going to talk about gaming like we will today. And today I'm going to talk to you about how I created Victor Temple, my character for LA by Night, and some other details of just sort of like how I put together characters in general, really, um, that might help you kind of breathe some life into ones that you're creating, both for players and for NPCs. I guess we already talked about creating memorable NPCs, so this is more about characters. Um, also, I got a little mic in here. Um, and and um, yeah, so let's see how this goes. Now again, remember, patrons get access to all my videos three days early. So patrons of any tier, uh, if you visit patreon.com forward slash Walters. But this in particular, uh, the reason why you are probably seeing this uh, sooner is I had a post that was going around on Twitter. I, in full disclosure, I'm still like rolling around finding my frame in here. So hopefully I don't give you too much motion sickness. Um, that was asking about the get to know my vampire from Vampire the Masquerade and people had to click likes and if I got enough likes I would answer the questions and I got enough likes to answer them all and I was going to record a video today so we're gonna pull a little bit of double duty here uh, that being said the questions are over there so if you see me turning my head I'm not ignoring you I'm not violating the basics of entertainment by turning away from the camera uh, but the questions are over there number one uh, this is, so this Get to Know My Vampire, this is up on my Twitter, uh, at Dave Walters. So, you know, toss me a follow if you haven't already. Uh, have they kept any of their human rituals like going to the same pub every Sunday? Uh, Victor lives at his club, so I'm gonna say yes. Um... Beyond that, I think uh, Victor's life would have already been so much about business anyway. Um, that like a lot of the places that he went to, I think the main transition would have been like he kind of owns them now. Uh, you all might recall at the start of the story, he still was sort of a glorified errand boy for Abrams before having come into his own and become a baron in his own right. Um, besides that, I don't think there's anything that like Victor would routinely do, especially now that he thinks it's probably like how people would try and hurt him, so or hurt somebody he loves. So no. Uh, number two. Do they still bathe, take a shower, despite their condition? Probably. Um, showers are still sexy, you know? Showers are still relaxing. Um, baths are nice. I feel like Victor, like me, probably has a very uh, difficult time taking baths in most places, and him being a man of resources, I could see he's probably got a comedically oversized tub somewhere that he can just stretch out and relax, sometimes maybe with company. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna say he still both showers and, and uh, takes baths just because they're relaxing. Uh, and what they mean about the condition, by the way, if you're not aware of this, again, kindred, since they don't sweat, they don't secrete oil, like they don't have uh, BO, so that's why they don't have to like shower as such unless they get dirty. Uh, number three, which blood resonance do they prefer? So I realize I'm terrible uh, at this because I've played this game so much you think I would know this off the top of my head, but I usually don't use a lot of blood resonances, because if you notice, we don't use a lot on Ellie by Night either. Um, I think Phlegmatic, isn't that the excited one? The one where they're like super pumped? Like the excited one is the, is the one I like. Um, even if I said the word wrong, it's like the, you know, the uppers. Uh, that's what I like. Um, number four, were they a night owl before they were embraced? Absolutely. Uh, again, I've gone on record many occasions saying that he's basically me, but even beyond the fact that he was me, uh, he's still like a hip hop producer and works in the music business. That is this like squeaky uh, yoga ball I'm sitting on there, by the way, that squeaking noise that you just heard. I was not being ungentlemanly. Um, yeah, so he super would have been a night owl because that's when the business takes place is at night. So yeah, he absolutely would have been. Um, how do they refer to their beast? How do they, what do they treat it like? Um, it does say, how do they treat it? Like, uh, so that's, uh, I guess, uh, you know, um, I don't think Victor refers to his beast as anything other than the beast. And if you've noticed, most of the times that it's come up in the game, uh, the beast is saying things that he agrees with. He's like, yes, fine. You know, um, um, 
Yeah, uh, it, it's, uh, people. More than one person has pointed out saying that Victor's got seems to have Sabat sympathies because he's kind of in total alignment with his beast. Uh, I prefer to think he's on his own version of the path to Golconda of not feeling this like terrible, um, clawing uh, difficulties inside. Uh, you know, feeling like he's like these different people torn in different directions. And uh, I think I've said before, one of the concepts I had for Victor was I overtly created him to be a vampire that was having a pretty good time. I didn't want him to be like super overly burdened with like ennui and the the unbearable weight of existence. It's like, nah, man, like I'm let me get this straight. I'm gonna live forever and I'm gonna be like wealthy and powerful and like essentially get to do what I want. Yes, yeah, sign me up for that. So he's been having a good ride. So it, it also doesn't make sense that if he had this like really agonizing, difficult relationship with his beast that he'd feel that way. So no, he, he's fine. It's kind of part of the deal. Uh, number six, which discipline are they naturally best at and why? Uh, yeah, Victor is an expert at dominate. Um, but again, I, I've, I've shared in the past uh, the reason why I specialized in Dominate was not because it's useful, although we have come to realize it is super useful. Uh, the reason why I specialized in Dominate was it was the only thing I could do that no one else could. Um, the Ventru disciplines are Dominate, which is, you know, mind control, Jedi mind tricks, uh, Presence, which is messing with people's emotions, and Fortitude, the physical durability. Uh, and even though he's got ranks and all of those things, fortitude you can't really show on screen unless I just went about, like, you know, jumping in front of bullets and stuff. You know, like Jasper. Uh, and to make a big point of the fact that when I got shot, I wouldn't get hurt. But if you notice, I used to say all the time that it's like if I, I'm not worried about getting shot. Like, I mean, bullets, I'm not worried about bullets. Like, all that stuff because it's fortitude. Um, also, both Nelly and Annabelle both have presence. So they, I mean, how many times have we activated awe and dawn and entrancement all at the same time and like poured some poor person all in different directions? So, Dominate was the one thing that set Victor apart, and that's why I, I dove into it. Now, over the fullness of time, it has again proven itself many, 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 many times. Uh, but at least initially, that was why I chose it. Uh, if he had been a gangrel or something, or had access to animalism or protean or some other discipline that no one else had, I, I would have I would have done the same thing there. I mean, yeah, I guess the results would have been very different, but I, I, should, I still would have done it. Uh, number seven, which of their convictions is the hardest to keep? Uh, slavery is wrong. Not in the sense that he's out enslaving people as such. But the fact that he's got this crusade against forcing people to do things when he's constantly using dominate is a logical um, conflict that I'm very aware of and have tried to show in the sense that there are times that Victor is very hypocritical about it in a way that he himself may not realize. That he's like, yay, free will, free will, free will, also do this thing I tell you. Um, number eight, before the embrace, how did they imagine their dream life? I honestly, I feel like he was living it. Because um, again, you know, Victor's backstory is he was playing professional basketball, but he got hurt and had to retire early um, and went into business and became a music producer. I think all things being equal, he probably would have wanted to play ball longer. Uh, probably win some championships, you know, become a legend in that respect, and then go into business. I think this path would have been the path that was ahead for him the entire time. Uh, he just probably got cast on it uh, earlier than he thought. Um, he very much is uh, one of those everything for a reason people, because I am. So the blowing out of his ACL or, or his knee would have been, um, to him, just like a sign from the universe that it was time to hang him up. You know, um, and get back to get back to his family, get back to his life uh, again. As you've seen, he was already um, he was gone all the time with sports. Then he was gone all the time with music. Then he was gone all the time being a vampire. Uh, but at least he would have tried to mend some of those relationships uh, to mix success, as we've seen. Um, number nine: Do they still celebrate their birthday or their death day? I think he celebrates his birthday. You know, that's interesting. I never even thought about his death day. I mean, I don't even know if astrologically that would still affect him. 
Um, he definitely would celebrate his birthday. I need to think about when I think his death day is. That's an interesting, that's an interesting um, question. Like I very much could see it was like the night of the Grammys or something that year. I need to, I need to look and see the night of the Grammys, the year that he was embraced. Do the math, and that is that would be the night that he would be embraced. And I think the Grammys would still always hold that extra bit of meaning for him. Again, I wouldn't necessarily call it bittersweet because for him, to Victor, this has been a net gain, really. Um, that is why, like, the struggle with, like, Annabelle's struggle to, like, be human again and stuff. He's like, for what? I did that. No thanks. Um, so, yeah, probably. Um, number 10. Which part of human life do they miss the most? I mean, again, he kind of hacks all the best parts of human life. I mean, you could say the sun in, like, a cliche way. I mean, like, I mean, I guess. Apologies there. I've been at this all day today. I did an interview this morning, and then I did the one-on-one -on -one shots with May, and then I was in the chat for Long Beach, and then now uh, we're, we're here now. Sorry, I apologize. Um, nothing. Nothing. I mean, maybe not always having a target on him, but again, in the hip-hop business, he had that then, too. So, I don't know. I mean, the sun is dope, I guess. Um, oh, beer. Yeah, being able to drink, like, bourbon barrel-aged beer and, and coffee and Gentleman Jack. Yeah, stuff he used to enjoy the taste of. That's what he misses. Um, boo, boo, boo. Uh, number 11. Uh, what do they feel towards their sire? Uh, I know who I want to play my sire, and I'm not going to say it here in case um, they it happens or it doesn't happen and we have to recast. I don't want the other person to feel like they were a, a consolation prize. Um, Victor gets on fine with his sire. Um, I will tell you, this is one of those things that has kind of been Schrodinger, Schrodinger's origin story. There's certain things I intended to be true about him that as his story has developed, no longer quite fit as being true. Um, <clears throat> that uh, as long as it doesn't like directly contradict something I've said, I don't mind it changing in my mind. Um, yeah, but I think he has a good relationship with his sire, uh, and he would respect them also, and respect their accomplishments and their business sense, and quite frankly, them having been smart enough to bring on the Baron, who wasn't the Baron at the time, but now they who, you know, how many people get to say they sired a Baron, right? Um, oh, and my sire is not Fiorenza, by the way, some people think that, it isn't. Um... Number 12, what kind of kindred, if any, are they most likely to trust? Another Ventru. Another Ventru. Um, business is business. And if you're good at it, you realize that uh, reputation is everything. And even though you could be a shrewd negotiator, just being an out, getting a reputation for being an outright liar is bad for business. Yeah. Fellow Blue Blood. Uh... Number 11, uh, oh no, sorry, number 13, what kind of kindred are they most likely to stay away from? Thin bloods. <laughs> I mean, hey, he has thrown in his lot to defend the Duskborn on principle, but the Book of Nod does sort of say they're harbingers of the apocalypse. <laughs> you know, uh, that is the challenge. They, you, you don't know what side their bread is buttered on. You don't know where their allegiance lay. You don't really know what they're capable of. They're, uh, they're an X-Factor. They're toddlers running around with have semi-automatic weapons. It's, uh, yeah, not too sure about the, about the, about the, about the Duskborn. Um, number 14. How did they end up finding their preferred predator type? Um, he is an Osiris. Uh, he's to feed on fans. Um, as a Ventru, he's got the double, doubly restrictive thing, so he's to feed on fans under 30. Um, I would say he probably didn't even realize it for a long time, because that just would have been the safety of his environment when he was still uh, famous for being an athlete, although I guess he was already done being an athlete by the time he was embraced, but he still would have had more notoriety from that, and just fans would have been around. Uh, he probably would have fed on somebody 
uh, at a random party that was just like being like nice to him or something and then like got violently ill and didn't know why because uh, they weren't really a fan they might have just kind of been like a little bit of a star fucker and uh, he's like what <laughs> and that's how he figured it out again just like the rat that didn't know who I was um then uh, 15 uh, what was the weirdest place what is the weirdest place containment they ever fell into a day sleep in? Oh, what is the weirdest place they ever slept in? Um, he's probably dove into his fair share of trunks. Uh, he's probably slept in his fair share of closets. I think he would have tried the coffin thing at least once. He'd have tried it at least once, because I mean, like, that's how it works in the movies, right? Like, let's see, you know, <laughs> like, there's any different. Um, he's probably a little bit claustrophobic, like me, doesn't like being constrained. They probably hated it. Um, we didn't have to sleep in the, uh, we didn't have to sleep in the labyrinth, um, when the club got blown up and we were, like, leaving in the limo, we slept in the limo in the broad daylight, I guess that was pretty strange, um, yeah, probably that, yeah. Um, number 16, what places were their favorite before they were embraced? Uh, anywhere where there's people, you know? Uh, concerts, shows, uh, showcases, games, um, anywhere that there was like fans that could be interacted with. That'd be his favorite place to be. Um, 17. Uh, what are their favorite places now when they're kindred? Uh, anywhere there's fans. Uh, of course, he's very comfortable with the Maharani because, you know, that that is, he it's his domain and that's the center of his domain and he gets to, to rule the roost in there uh, and get to call the shots and have people listen, you know, which is always nice. Um, yeah, inside the Maharani, uh, second to that, anywhere that he can go and be the big man, um, he likes, uh, he's fine uh, going into those other environments, like going into the Camarilla Elysium or another Baron's, um, domain, uh, as long as, you know, you're shown the proper respect when you get there, but definitely home court advantage at the Maharani. Uh, number 18, do they think their clan fits them? If they could pick any other, who would they be? No, 40,000% Ventru. 40,000%. Uh, again, the process of working on Anarchs of New York has given me a newfound respect for the La Sombra. Uh, so I think if I couldn't be a Ventru, I'd be a La Sombra. But, uh, again, as you know, I, I had the choice to be anything, most anything, and I chose Ventru on purpose. Um, the, I love the Blue Bloods, I always have. Um, and I had a chance to be their face in the modern era to reintroduce the clan to people that had uh, known it in the past and might have never known it. And uh, I was deeply honored to get to be the standard bearer. I was looking for my dice box that's over there with the logo. I can't reach it easily. Um, for our clan Ventru. So I, I have never regretted it at any point. But if for some reason Ventru were not an option, La Sombra. Um, number 19... If they could learn any discipline, which one would they master first? I mean, again, it was Dominate. Um, I think Dominate Fortitude Presence, again, is what the Ventru have. Um, if I could have another one after that. I mean, again, I, I kind of can if I just, like, ask people. Um, and, and he's actually got some potence, too, hence the Soaring Leap. Um... Again, you know, you would think Auspex, so he could finally see some of these invisible things. He's just come to come to accept that he can't. Um, probably celerity. Probably just being fast. Because if he could just, like, draw down on people with his gun faster or issue his dominate commands faster or any other things like that, that's probably the best, what he would want. Um, in 20, last but not least, if they could choose their true death, how would they like to die? Ooh! Believe it or not, believe it or not, I've put a lot of thought into this. I'm 100% clear on the terms under which Victor would and would not allow himself to meet the final death. Um, I mean, not counting what the dice say. I mean, circumstances where, like, he wouldn't run. He would just stand there and face it. Um, Victor would just want to die for something. Uh, I realized this when I was playing Chateau back in uh, We're Alive Frontier, which ironically enough, when I created Victor, I expressly tried to make him 
the exact opposite of Chateau. And after two seasons of We're Alive and four seasons of L.A. by Night, they're kind of the same person, just without an apocalypse, uh, because I guess they still were rooted in me. Um, but I remember with Chateau, I was, I was very comfortable with him dying, so much so in the finale of season one, I thought I was going to die in that fight. No spoilers if you haven't seen it. It's one of the craziest things that I've ever been a part of, ever, and I was lucky enough that it got caught on film. But I would, uh, I just didn't want to just catch a stray bullet or something and just like die in the street, like meaninglessly. Uh, same with Victor. If he can die, you know, protecting his friends or advancing the cause or protecting the kindred of Los Angeles or ideally, you know, taking some greater menace with him, that's how I'd like for him to die. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there you go. 20 questions about uh, Victor Temple and hopefully you got like a little more insight into why he is how he is um, and uh, I've given you guys a lot of clues about uh, what he's after and where he's going and what he's trying to accomplish I play the long game y'all I have known from the very beginning what it was I was trying to do with him that's why when opportunities present themselves I can seize on them so quickly because I know who he is and what he's trying to do so I would say in a, in a general bit of uh, advice there for your characters just sort of ask yourself those questions get to like read like who are they what really matters to them what would they die for who would they die for if anybody you know um would they lay it on the line to protect the their friends or would they leave them all to save their own skin would they join the bad guy would they become the bad guy you know those are all questions that you have to ask and i think more than that remember above all else they are living, breathing people. Well, not breathing or living in our case, but you know what I mean. Uh, they are individuals that have their own existence in this world, that they exist to be something theoretically over more than killing machines or murder hobos. So I ask you, who is that person? You know, what do they want? You know, freaking Maslow's hierarchy of needs. What looks like self-actualization for them? and start working towards it. Partner with your DM or storyteller and let them know where you're trying to go with your character and see if you can pull it off in a fulfilling and exciting way. But uh, either way, just the most important thing is to get in there and do it. Play. Yeah. So, there you go. 20 questions with the Baron.